We welcome you inside the coach's office for another edition of the Pikeo Podcast. Rutgers 2-1 and one after back-to-back wins at Jersey Mike's Arena, and we are joined by the star himself, none other than head coach Steve Pikeo. Coach, how are you? you use that term loosely. <laughs> um, Maybe, but after those last two games, pretty good. Feeling a little bit better. Um, you know, it's, it's interesting. Early in the season, the different obstacles you hit. I love all of them because I know they're coming too, and... Uh, you know, I think we figured out some things about us and we solved some problems that we had in the first game, obviously playing a you know, really good Princeton team, an experienced Princeton team, didn't rebound, didn't play you know, the way I would like, but give them credit. No one ever gives the opponent credit. They were a sweet 16 team last year and um, they did a wonderful job you know, in that game. But uh, we solved some of our rebounding issues. We learned a lot about ourselves in the first three games. Um, so excited about, you know, where this program could be and keep moving forward this year uh, on this journey. All right, let's take them one at a time. So after the Princeton game, you learned some stuff, and it was pretty noticeable. You come out against Boston, and the game that Gavin Griffiths played is the game that I believe every Rutgers fan, alum, part of the program was expecting him to play. As you're watching that unfold, did you have the, the sense that when he gets the ball, that ball's going in? Because that's how it felt to us. Yeah. You, you know, you have those kind of games and uh, just really uh, appreciate how he prepared for that game. Like, he had two great practices. He had a focus. Um, you know, he, he was going to score in that, in that basketball game. And our guys did a good job of finding him. He did a good job of getting himself open for shots. And he also rebounded the basketball. You know, you get yourself a few easy ones. He got in the lane, got a couple dunks, got a dunk off the rim. You know, I just think he played with really good energy, but we as a team, um, you know, did a really good job of, of rebounding and playing real physical and finding, you know, the hot hand. And part of that game, and it kind of transitions into the second game too against Bryant, just because he was such a big part of both, Andre Hyatt was just steady and, and outstanding, to be quite honest, in both games. What did you see differently from him in those two games than maybe you saw all of last year? I will tell you, um, he, he had a voice. He really found his voice after the Princeton game. Like, you know, our team took on his leadership traits. He, um, he was a calming influence. He was calming influence on the court too, but he was a physical presence. He took good shots. Um, he was a physical presence around the rim. You know, he had an unbelievable shot block at the you know, end of the Bryant game too that we really needed. Uh, you know, and he just played with such leadership and poise. That's what I was really, really pleased with. And he's got to continue to do that. He's got to be a consistent player for us, night in and night out, a good rebounder, a good defender, a good leader. Um, and he's going to continue to have a great year if he continues doing those little things. And, and speaking of little things, the one thing that I thought that stood out specifically in the last two games and the Bryant game too is how many different contributors in different ways. Like Derek necessarily wasn't shooting lights out, but he's lights out from the free throw line when you need him. It looked like he was trying to create. It looked like Noah's defense was really good. We mentioned Andre Cliff after halftime Sunday was like a man possessed. What does that say about the team collectively? I mean, really, you know, you see these little snapshots of all of them. Now we got to put it all together. You know, I think that's the most important thing. But, you know, Cliff dominated the second half. So every big rebound that came off the glass was his. Um, you know, he's got to play with that mindset. And when he plays that way, we got to get him the ball as much as possible. But, you know, Derek made big plays, got to the rim, but his defense really was outstanding too. He sat down and guarded their best player, leading scorer in the league. Um, you know, and then when it was time in the second half to make free throws, which we haven't done prior, we went 19 for 23 in the second half, time to ice the game. So, you know, you saw some really good signs of us being good defensively and, and then at times good offensively. Then you saw us be sloppy offensively. Then you saw where our defense let us down. Um, we are running and playing at a different pace. So every game now we've gotten 20 or more points in fast break. So we are playing a little bit fast, but um, now the adjustments have to come in between. When you can't get anything good, let's reverse the ball, play basketball on both sides of the floor, get it into the post, you know, do those kind of things. So this team is evolving, but a lot of new pieces. But I, I like the pieces. we got to put the puzzle together. And what does it say, too, about the club? And you even, in the pregame chat that we had, an interview, you talked about 
a team in Bryant that's got guys from big programs. They're going to keep coming at you. And I thought Sunday, uh, you know, you'd get up on them, they'd come right back. You'd get up eight, here they come again. What is that saying? What can that do for you going forward when you get into these really tough conference games that team's never out of it and you got to keep playing? Well, it happens every game. There, there was a win time in the Princeton game and we came down and, and we didn't get stops and we didn't execute offensively. We saw that film. You know, we got win time yesterday. We executed. We The last four possessions, they didn't score. We made every free throw to, like, close out the game. Like, so when it was win time, we did what we needed to do to win the game, you know. And during the course of every game, whether you're playing as well as you'd like or not as well as you'd like, there always comes that time where the game is within reach. And um, you got to take advantage of those situations. And the film now that we have to show Noah – to show Austin, to show Gavin, to, so they truly understand that concept is here now. We've been there before, you know, when, and uh, how important it is to finish, finish the deal. And two games at home at Jersey Mike's. I know this is a topic you love talking about, but I got to tell you, for an NFL Sunday, and I know the Giants didn't play till late, but for an NFL Sunday to be as alive as Jersey Mike's was for a noon game, just talk about the coming... Uh, presence that the kids have when they get to play here at home in front of their fans? I mean, never a 12 o'clock game, you know. Uh, you and I never sleep, so we're up <laughs> anyways. It's that kind of thing for us, but uh, for fans to be able to get out of their house and to get there, for the students to roll out of bed and to get to 12 o'clock game isn't always the easiest thing on, on Sundays. And to have that crowd on a Sunday and the crowd for the BU game, they give you energy, they give us positivity. They see how hard these guys work, too. And, uh, you know, like I always say, in, enjoy the journey. Like the fans got to enjoy the journey, seeing Gavin, you know, play, seeing Jamichael, J. Mike, and what he's learning. And now we've added those other pieces and see the development of Andre Hyatt. You know, he didn't do those things last year. Now he's expected to do them and uh, the added responsibilities. And then I always like seeing Moat warm up too with our team because yep. that means we're getting closer and closer to, to having him, you know, back on the court. So, uh, thankful for our fans always, and I always tell you this, it makes a huge, huge difference in, in the basketball games. All right, Coach, time now for the fan interaction, if you will. These are off social media. This is from Cheyenne on X or Twitter, whatever we call it these days. Um, she says, Rutgers seems to be getting to the rim with ease. Why has finishing layups the first couple of games been a little more difficult? Uh, what do you guys do in practice to get better at it? Yeah, I tell you what, it's um, our shot quality has been really good for our games that we've played. So that means we're getting to the rim and, you know, finishing, finishing with contact. We do put in drills all the time. You know, we're emphasizing it. You watch more film. Um, guys get better as the season progresses, too. They got to embrace the contact and that, you know, pads. And we don't call any fouls in practice either. So that's a good thing. You know, you got to play through fouls. Um, you know, so we'll address it. Every year you have things that are going well for you. Not What I like about us is that we're getting to the rim. What I don't like right now is that we're finishing. We're not finishing, but uh, hopefully we can continue to get to the rim and then get better at finishing. This one's from Max. Uh, how do you prepare differently non-conference games to conference games? Well, I mean, the big thing, and that's a great question, you know, the, the non-conference early games, you just don't have the prep um, so it's very different. By the time we get to our league games, first of all, we know the opponents and we know them for years. Mm -hmm. um, we probably recruited some of the recruits, so we've even known those kids as high school players. Non-conference takes on a whole different turn. You don't know the rosters as well. Um, you don't know um, the defenses as well and their schemes. Um, like Bryant didn't play any zone and then all of a sudden they play all zone. Um, I don't know if they did that just for us or if they just said, let me try this, you know, type of a deal. So uh, you have to be ready to adjust on the fly. Sometimes that's a hard thing to do. So um, the less film you have, um, the less days you have to prepare. They had four days. We had one day. Yeah. You know, makes a big, big difference. And in, in, in especially in teams you're not as familiar with. And the last one comes from Dave on X. Can you ask Coach about the signed recruits? We can take them. In order, if you'd like, we could start with Dylan Grant. Well, I will tell you, uh, one of the great kids, too, I've recruited in years. I'm in uh, wonderful energy. Uh, one of the best athletes, probably, that we've signed since I've been here. Plays multiple positions. Uh, can guard one through five. Um, I, I think his potential is off the charts. 
um, just added another wonderful um, blue collar worker, great student from a great family. Um, and his versatility is going to be un unbelievable. An elite rebounder mm. at this stage of the game, too. Elite rebounder. All right, how about Bryce Dor um, Dorch? I tell you what, he, he's another guy. Six foot nine and growing. Um, hmm. You know, he kind of reminds me of a taller Caleb McConnell. Uh, very good ball handler. Could almost be, you know, a backup point guard or a point guard at some point in time. Really can handle the ball. Very good passer. Um, you know, again, great family. Really good student from a, a, a really good program. I'm excited to, to have him and, and his energy. Thirdly, Lathan, Lathan Somerville. Yeah, Lathan is, uh, is from great basketball stock. Um, father was a terrific player. Mom played um, a really good passer. Um, built like a linebacker, mm. you know. Um, very skilled, uh, very competitive. You know, I think his upside is as good as any any player that we've signed here. And he's got a work ethic and a toughness about him too. So thrilled to add him. I mean, you know, and, and, and uh, thrilled to watch his development. Work ethic and toughness, your kind of kid. And then lastly, Ace Bailey. I mean, Ace is just unique. Um, six foot nine, plays multiple positions. Um, I think could be one of the best defenders in the country from day one. Um, can guard point guards. Um, lateral quickness is outstanding. He's, you know, another really good passer, like, too. So you think of these guys, he can really score, but he's an outstanding ability to pass the basketball. Um, a highlight film guy. Um, high energy, wonderful family. Um, it's a class, you know, all four of them, you know. Um, great people, really good passing ability. Like, I'm really excited about they're all unselfish passers and uh you know thankful for my assistance did a wonderful job but we got really good you know really good kids from great families uh, that are going to work hard and have unbelievable basketball careers well thank you for your time we will do this again in a couple of weeks with another edition of the pikel podcast sounds good thank you